Hello, my name is Łukasz Budka. I'm from University of Warsaw and from the Stempni.eu team. In this ILSA video, I will help you understand workflows used in producing live subtitling for live events and online streaming. Let's start now. As with previous presentations, the events and examples demonstrated here mainly come from the practice of the Dostempni.eu team led by me and Monika Szczygielska. Since 2014, the Dostempni EU team has provided live subtitles during events in various languages. Users may not care what the speaker's language is, since subtitles will always be displayed in the mother tongue, which is Polish in these examples. However, from the point of view of re-speakers, re-speaking in the same language and interpreting into another language are quite different. Thus, we distinguish between two types of re-speaking. Intralingual re-speaking, which happens within the same language, for example, English to English or Polish to Polish. The target user group of this type of re-speaking are mainly the deaf and the hard of hearing. Interlingual re-speaking, in turn, is done between different languages, for example, from English into Polish, or from Spanish into English. The users of this type of re-speaking are somewhat different and may include foreigners learning a new language, or those who watch video in noisy environments, at a bar, railway station, or a fitness centre, or in any context when you can't turn the sound on. In this module, we've prepared for you a number of videos, including a case study video on interlingual re-speaking. You will have a chance to watch this video later on. Pay special attention to the process of making live interlingual subtitles. By now, you might have gone through module 2 of the ILSA course, which explains re-speaking in general. Then you will know that, depending on local practices that vary between countries, re-speakers can work in a team or individually. In English-speaking countries, such as the UK or the US, the text is usually respoken and edited by a single person. This might be associated with more tolerance for errors in live subtitling, as re-speakers are not always able to correct all the errors when working alone. In other countries, such as Poland or Belgium, Live subtitles are made by a team of at least two people. The team comprises a re-speaker and an editor, sometimes also known as a moderator. The re-speaker can focus on listening and re-speaking, while the editor handles all the corrections. Depending on local practices, things such as identifying speakers through the use of colors or name tags can be done by either the re-speaker or the moderator. This model allows for error-free or almost error-free subtitles. Yet another model exists in France, where a team of three people works on live subtitles, with one person re-speaking, another spotting errors, and yet another person correcting them. This has the potential of eliminating all possible errors and creating perfect subtitles. The choice between these different working models depends upon the characteristics of your language and how developed speech recognition software for this language is, as the development of the speech recognition software can influence the number of errors that need to be corrected, local market considerations and user expectations can also play a role. In some countries, users might be more used to seeing occasional errors in live subtitles, whereas in other places they might expect and demand error-free subtitles. As for interlingual re-speaking, usually re-speakers work in a team. There are two ways in which interlingual live subtitles can be made when working as a team. You can either benefit from the interpreter's output or you can work directly from the source language. In this case, re-speakers effectively interpret, that is, translate orally, the original text. Let's now look at the first possible model, where you have both an interpreter and a re-speaker. The following chain of events 
needs to occur in order for the likes of titles to appear on the screen. The speaker speaks in the source language, then the interpreter simultaneously interprets the speech into the target language. Then re-speaker re-speaks from the interpreter's input, the editor corrects errors he or she has spotted and sends interlingual like subtitling to the screen or to other display devices. This model is applicable mainly to those conferences which include the participation of important guests and where there has to be two-way simultaneous interpretation. Examples include official events with politicians uh, from different countries or, as was the case during the premiere of the Netflix series The Witcher, uh, which you can see in this picture. The actors, who did not speak Polish, had questions interpreted for them into English, and they were able to respond in English. Then, their utterances were displayed on a big screen above them. Thanks to the use of live interlingual subtitles, the participants at this event could access translation without the need of headphones and receivers. If the organizers do provide simultaneous interpretation for an event, it is up to an interlingual speaker to decide whether he or she wants to use it or not at the given point. Let's now look at another possible model where we speaker and interpreter become one person. The chain of events gets shortened by one link. We have the speaker speaking in the original language. And then we have the interlingual re-speaker interpreting the speaker into the target language and the editor introducing corrections and displaying live subtitles on the screen. This is exactly how we provided live subtitles during the ILSA event in Warsaw. English was the working language of this conference. The deaf and hard of hearing persons from Poland also took part in that event. That is why we had both intralingual English subtitles and also interlingual subtitles in Polish. The latter were prepared by a team of interlingual re-speakers and editors. Interlingual re-speaking, the second model shown in this presentation, is more difficult and demanding. However, there are some benefits to this model. These include smaller delay in displaying subtitles. This is because, as we have seen before, the chain of events is shorter. The re-speaker does not have to wait for the interpreter to understand the utterance and express it into another language. In this way, the re-speaker can potentially start re-speaking faster, saving some time. There is also less risk of changing the meaning because it's a direct translation. This uh, sometimes has a positive impact on the clarity of interpretation. Just as in the television settings, live subtitles for live events can be made on site, that is, in the venue of the event, or remotely. For remote provision of live subtitles, you can use a professional studio, but you can also work from home. Now, let's take a closer look at the working conditions of re-speakers working at live events. Re-speakers may work in a separate room, a place which is acoustically isolated from its surroundings so that unwanted sounds do not interfere with speech recognition. Unfortunately, not all the events take place in a plenary room or conference room equipped with booths for simultaneous interpreters or with a control room for technicians. Different spaces can be adapted to host events. In such cases, event organizers may opt for portable booths. If this happens, uh, you should pay attention to details that might seem of little importance but can make all the difference. The booth needs to be equipped with a fan, as otherwise you will run out of fresh air quickly and it will be so much harder for your brain to focus. If a team of three speakers and moderators is to work at an event, the booth should be larger than the standard one to give them all enough space. For a re-speaker, the key elements are the sound and the view of the event room or space. 
the re-speaker not only has to hear what is said, but also should be able to see the speakers so as to react if any atypical situation arises. For instance, you might not hear somebody speaking if they don't speak to the microphone. If you notice that, you can react. However, during some events, it is simply impossible to, walk, to work in the booth. In such cases, a stunner mask may be a convenient solution. A stunner mask is a mask fitted with a microphone which cancels out all the noises, thus making the quality of speech recognition higher. We are showing here pictures of two stunner masks manufactured by American companies. Stunner masks are particularly popular in the US. They were introduced in American courts back in the 1950s. American re-speakers, called voice writers, for instance court reporters, use them very often. It's interesting to note that the invention of a stunner mask made it much easier for blind people to work as court reporters. Until today, re-speaking is a profession fully accessible to the blind, and blind re-speakers often excel at their jobs, thanks to their excellent hearing skills. Live subtitles are used not only during events, but also in online streaming. This picture presents a situation where the same re-spoken text is used both on-site uh, as a live transcription of the proceedings, but is also included in live online streaming in the form of subtitles. So uh, let's have a look. You have re-speakers here, and they are doing their job, re-speaking, and then the text that they produce appear on the screen for all the participants of this event. But it also gets combined with the view of the presentation and the view of the speaker, and then it gets sent to the online streaming that can be accessed by people following this event online. Note that on site, the subtitles are shown on a screen as a text with multiple lines. This is something you can see in the pictures on the left. In online live streaming, in turn, the subtitles can be in the form of one or two lines of text. Have a look at the picture on the right. Here we see a one line subtitle. There is a difference in the delay of subtitles between the two modes. In online live streaming, the stream can be delayed in order to synchronize the stream with subtitles. This is how the naturally occurring delay, resulting from re-speaking and interpretation, can be fully eliminated. Here, you can see examples of subtitles on the screens and in live online streaming. The examples are taken from conferences organized by the Vidyani Foundation and live subtitles for these events were provided by the Dostepni.eu team. Online live streaming is not an automatic process. It requires a special technician to control it and dedicated hardware. This is not something you're likely to do yourself, so we won't be getting into more details on this. But I would like to mention one thing. If we have both simultaneous interpretation, and interlingual live subtitles available during the same event, we have to decide which of these will be shown in online live streaming. These may be two different texts which may cause a cognitive dissonance for the hard of hearing users. In other words, they will be hearing one word and seeing another. As always, giving users choice is the best way to go. If you have an event and you will have both subtitles and interpreting, that is spoken translation, we recommend that you have two separate online streamers, one with subtitles and the other with the interpretation. If you can't have two streams, for technical reasons, for example, it's best to choose either subtitles or interpretation and not include both of them in one stream. In this video, you learned more about how live subtitles can be produced for live events and online streaming. You now know there are different possible workflows. One of them involves interlingual re-speaking, and it offers a number of benefits. But in order to use this workflow more, we need more skilled interlingual re-speakers. 
and we hope many of you can become interlingual re-speakers and this way we hope to have more interlingual live subtitling which is a valuable service that helps many people access live events and online streaming.